would just give a shot at this, of throwing out some names and see what comes to your mind. It's just a couple of guys I think you're going to okay. remember. I'm going to start you with quarterback Chad Mays, a fourth round draft choice from Kansas State. Ever have a run in with Chad? Um, yeah, I think it's best for Mike to tell this story because it's probably one of my favorites of all time. Well, it's a, it ranks right up there with the Bell game. Uh, but uh, Chad May, that's a whole different story of the Bell game. But Chad May was a quarterback, I think, either out of Kansas or Kansas State. Picked him in the fifth round, had a chip on his shoulder because he was with the Bill Walsh uh, quarterback school where Walsh was mentoring these guys early before they came out of college. And he felt like since he went through the Bill Walsh program with a couple other named quarterbacks that went ahead of him, that he should also be drafted that high. Well, uh, as it turned out, he went fifth round. And uh, he came in, and he had an attitude like you would not believe. Just off the charts. And he would stroll down the field, and he'd look at he'd look at players, and he'd, before practice would start, I'd be warming up uh, with a punter or a kicker, and Zahner would be standing, Gary Zahner was the special team coach, He'd be standing right over the top of me, and um, and we'd be talking, and I'd snap uh, eight or ten, fifteen footballs just to get my arm warm. And before special teams, and Chad May comes rolling up in there, and he says to Gary Zahner, "Doesn't talk to me. He's a rookie." He says to Gary Zahner, "How much does a guy like that make?" <laughs> to me, he about he points at me. How much does a guy like that make? <laughs> and Gary Zahner says, "Oh, I don't know. I mean, Mike." What are you making this year? About four hundred fifteen thousand. I said, yeah, about four twenty-five. And Chad May turns around, he goes <laughs> and walks off. <laughs> I'm like, oh, too damn! What a little bastard! <laughs> so we're in the dorm, and he's making fun of how much money I made. And he's fifth round, and he's taking the bill off school. Blah blah blah. And so of course, I would always be in charge of the universal key that would unlock any door given to me by a certain coach that I won't name, Tony Dungy. <laughs> and I would go I would go up and we would have our way, you know, after curfew, after eleven o'clock, and get the guys we wanted to get. And of course I put in I put in an order for Chad May. So with that, and this and this I mean and this was the this keep in mind this was the last night that we had on camp. It was the night before the rookie show it was the night before a bunch of other stuff. So Basically, right. this and trust me, the other guys that went out with Chad set him up. Cause they had him, they had, him, oh, they had yeah. drinks in him when he got back. <laughs> had a couple thirteen fourteen in him. Uh, I had several brews in Chad May, and he was also in, the, in his room with him was a, uh, some quarterback from Iowa, uh, just another Army champ. But uh, we went in, and Chad was already funny enough sleeping on his bed, or most of us we call it passed out, and so. With that being said, Todd Stussy, Randall McDaniel, myself, Ran, uh, John Randall, and Chris Hinton, and uh, a couple other guys, but those were the main, Al and Jeff Christie, because there's something involved in this story that includes Jeff Christie. So, um, Todd looks at Chad May on the bed, passed out on his stomach, and he runs <laughs> from the hallway to the bed <laughs> and jumps up as high as he can onto his back. <laughs> I thought, my God, he's, he's killed him. He's killed him. He's killed him. I'm like, I thought he had effing killed him. It broke yeah. his back. Yeah. Ty could have cared less, laughing like a just a big baby Huey on the back, just laughing and thinking, <laughs> funniest thing you could possibly do. So, it, it, you know, the kid was still alive, so we weren't done with him. So we take the telephone cord out of the phone uh, that was on his desk, and we tie his hand yeah. to one end of the bed, and we either use a belt or something else to secure his feet to the other side, uh, to his bunk. And so he was hogtied right there. And Christy decides he'll just go over to the sink and start dumping everything he can from tumbler after tumbler of cold water on Chad Bay to, uh, you know, I'm finding stuff up on his shelf. I found his spittoon where he'd been chewing yeah. and spitting in the cup, and I dumped that on him. I took toothpaste, and I rolled it up in his ear like an ice cream cone. And then, of course, Christy, not knowing what one bottle was on the shelf, poured it all over him, emptied the bottle, and walked out. We walked out. And I went upstairs to get a couple running backs upstairs, uh, James Stewart and uh, Bobby Phillips. We were going to get those two and then call it a night. But funny enough, we turn around, 
in the middle of the hallway, all the way down to the other end of the hallway, under the lights, in the dim lights, you know, in the hallway, with a person yelling, I'm going to kill you. And it was Chad May. <laughs> now, mind you, it's Kenton McDaniel, Daniel McDaniel, myself, Christy, and I think a couple other defensive linemen. And he's standing down there like Clint Eastwood in, in the movie Tightrope. <laughs> and he's saying... And he looks all the way down the, at the end of the hallway where we were at these other two guys' rooms, and he says, I'm going to kill you. And I'm like, well, this is going to be really fun. But I don't know how he's going to do He's standing there in boxer shorts, white boxer shorts. And that's all he's got. And his hair's a mess. Previously white boxer shorts. <laughs> Previously white boxer shorts. And absolutely dripping with stuff that we threw on him, and he's going to kill all of us. And then we take off, you'll get him, and then he comes out. And screams at the top of his lungs, get to bed. You know, get to bed. So we yet ran as far as fast as we could down to our rooms, down second floor, and, and just chilled out for the rest of the night, didn't do anything else. So we got out on the practice field the next day. And, uh, and Chad May walks up and he's walking funny. He's walking strange. And he walks up to Coach Green. We're over in the pit, uh, with the offensive line. Watching him walk out there for the first time, it's the first time we've seen him all day. So it's in the morning practice. And he walks out to Coach Green and he pulls his pants out, the front of his pants, fly. <laughs> and he points down inside of his pants to Green. And it's like, I can't go. Well, we don't know what he's doing. Uh -huh. And Green laughs, looks down at us uh, because he knows what's happened. But I still don't know what's going on. But Green points to him and tells him to get his rear end down at the end of the field with the quarterbacks or you know, working pat and go with the receivers and tight ends and running backs. In other words, it's not a day off for you. You're going down there. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, as it turns out, we get back to the locker room after practice. And he's, un you know, he's getting out of his gear. And his whole midsection, including his nards, are beat red. <laughs> absolutely chapped and almost blistered deep red Christy had poured tape remover <laughs> all over him in that out of that bottle <laughs> and it had burnt him chemically burnt him <laughs> all up and down his private all over him and he, he so he was hurting for two days and then it peeled like a snake oh <laughs> All of that skin dried and peeled off. And I mean, we, it was unbelievable. I mean, way to go, Christy. You burn him with, uh, with a chemical reaction because he slept in it all night. He didn't change his clothes, and he didn't change the sheets on his bed. Wow. I, I said, and by the way, Chad, I make about 425000 <laughs>